Oh, oh man, Zarvox never sleeps. It's like Rust never sleeps. <laughs> and they, you know, Rust, it's true. Rust, Rust never, never there sleeps. There was an album about that, yeah. Yeah. Not, uh, not unless <laughs> you were to take away the water or, and or the uh, oxygen. Yes. Being, you need both for Rust. But then you're not sleeping. You right. Know, yeah. for, for some people, for some reason, people think that Rust is, is, is only an oxygen thing. Never understood that. It's a... Yeah, they're probably a, trying to form colonies on Mars, too, as far as I know. Not to name any names. <laughs> Poor Elon. He no, is he, he is extremely he, confused. He's being picked on by me, I know that. And me. I, I will do it. I'll do it. Nobody else I'll will. Do I'll do it. I'll do it. Bum, 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 bum. I even left my uh, instruments of science at home, so that's uh, all right. Hey, listen, I am so excited because I have Robert. You know, remember last week when I had too many topics? Yeah. I still have too many. You did it again? And they, and they include some of your are your favorites like cannibalism, <laughs> graphene. I love cannibalism. You know, there's, in fact, you know, those fact, crazy, you know, those shrimp. I yeah. know how much you love shrimp, but you know, those shrimp that have those claws, <laughs> and explosive claws. Uh, you we surprised at how they're being. You uh, have to shrimp? Well, the, the mantis shrimp. Yeah, the, this the is mantis shrimp. Yeah. This is mantis shrimp. You, you know, when, when, when I was in. American Samoa. Ah. Some of my best friends. Samo, Samo, Samoa, my best friends? Samoa, my <laughs> best friends, were descendants of the cannibals. Oh, I thought you were going to say of mantis shrimp. No. What do you mean descendants of cannibals? Descendants of cannibals. In Whoa. fact, there is a plaque on the back <laughs> oh, no. side of the island of Tutuila. Are, are you telling too much? Where, oh, I am probably telling way too much. Oh, but on the back side of the island of Tutuila, where there are no roads that you have to hike to or snorkel to. Wow. There is a plaque that was put there by the French, and every year or so... Well, they know cuisine, too. Oh, they do. <laughs> the In fact, there. they were... <laughs> oh, uh, some time ago, they were a part of the cuisine. Oh, my God. Uh, well, there was okay, a I French see. explorer ship came into the backside of the island, and there was a, 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 a village there, and... Uh, there was a misunderstanding, shall oh. we put it, and some of the French didn't make it back to the ship, but they did make it into the stew pot. Oh my or, gosh. well, well, I should say not stew pot, the ground ovens. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, and so uh, every year there is a uh, ship from France that comes and places a wreath oh. on that, and I happen to be is it there. Like a sprig of basil <laughs> with. Uh... No. <laughs> that is that is really low, that Richard. Is... That is. <laughs> <laughs> but that is awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, um, so uh, I uh, just, um, I happened to be there one one Saturday morning when the French ship was there. And I knew enough French to sort of carry on a conversation until they went, do you speak English? <laughs> no, no. Thank goodness. <laughs> and then we carried on the rest of the conversation. And it, yeah, it uh, it turned out that uh, several of the, the French crew did not make it back to the ship. Wow. Uh, I don't know if somebody called somebody's mama something. I don't know what happened. Wow. But it did not go well. So, uh, yes. So so this, the early Samoans appreciated French cuisine as much as they many other They certainly did, would. yes. They went, ooh, yes, these French are delicious. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, um, you folks I'm, are listening I'm too to... scared to do the rest of the show. Now, you folks are, doing, are, are listening to Radio Science News. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have all kinds of specialties there. Um, you're listening to episode number... 802 in a series. Uh, this is uh, September 4th, 2021. Uh, if you're into prime numbers, anything that ends in a two, except for two, is, of course, not a prime number. So yeah. this is actually the factors two and 401. Isn't that interesting? That's oh, very nice. today is also, if you live on the planet Venus, and I know some of you do, <laughs> um, this is the 25th just... anniversary of Radio Science News on Venus. In Venus years. In Venus years, yes. Uh -huh. Venus years. Now, I just have a vacation home there. I don't really, you know, um, I don't spend I, the whole year there. The heat, I, the I heat did, is so much. Oh, the uh, heat, it's worse than New Orleans. It's, it's a wet oh, heat. It's oh, a wet heat. Oh, it's, oh, it, it's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> Sulfurous. <laughs> All right, listen, I've got variants. I've got enzymes. I've got tardigrades. I've got the Mars trip. I have oh. some news about the ECAT demo that's coming up. ECAT demo. Hey, um, uh, be, 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 before you continue, oh, yeah. if you want to get to uh, Richard's oh, yeah, reading really off the topics from our uh, from our launch pad of science, if you go to the Smart, Smart Center webpage, which is www.smartcenter.org, uh, click on the words 
radio science news I just see above them. the trifecta rainbow there. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do that, and for the first time in my existence in this universe, in the multiverse, uh, in, in, in this Earth sense, you'll see today's, we will see today's launch pad of science. I'm, I'm so excited. Is my little blue thing that goes around and around. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Variants, enzyme, tardigrades. I love tardigrades. Tardigrades. I are think tardigrades great. are the coolest thing they ever. They are very cool. Um, and they and, could make a Mars trip. Then probably. Well, they could make a Mars trip, and, and they survive. could probably come back alive too. But look at this. Human but beings. look at this other stuff I've got. Zero point vortex beams. Vortex beams. Cannibalism. Photonic. No, you don't have. Oh, oh. You skip solar hauler. Well, solar hauler. That's, solar those hauler. Are, that's, then cannibalism. Yeah, and then at at. Ed Zenoa, which we didn't. Ed these Zenoa. are the ones that we haven't gotten to for three weeks. Photonic keep... graphene shrimp crown. Shrimp crown. Ooh. Now, the thing that's going to excite you the most, of course, Bone, is that I and chart. Then bonus chart. Okay, so I'll oh, tell you what. My. Because I'm afraid we're already going to be spending a lot of time with uh, you know COVID issues. Yes. Let us look at the chart first, and then the okay. bonus chart. Chart. And that way, maybe, and, and who knows how far we'll get after that? Because who knows? okay, I'm clicking on the chart. The very first one, and this is from. I love this little website called Worldometer. World, oh, this World is Worldometers. Cool. You know, I, I I stumble bumbled into this a while yeah, back. we talked about this before. This is before. a really good good website. Okay, <clears throat> so in Florida, uh, three million three hundred fifty four thousand. Wait, 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 wait. This can't be. These are coronavirus is, cases. Is is just in Florida? I There's think it three, is. Yeah. Three point three five four million just cases. Coronavirus cases in Florida. Yeah. 46,324 deaths yeah. in Florida? In Florida. Wow. I I don't think I'm going to be going to Florida oh, anytime I can, soon. I've canceled. I'm, I'm going to put, I'm, I, I decided not to wax my surfboard. Um, I just want to say that when I'm looking down, there's a graph, and I love graphs. And uh, it's a proper graph because it starts at zero. If your graph does not start at zero and they don't make oh, a big yeah, yeah, deal yeah. about that, they're trying to lie to you. I'm just going to tell you that that that, that up front. But, but but this is not one of those graphs. So it starts back here, March 12, 2020, at essentially uh, 35 cases. Okay, and then it goes uh, to 74 cases by June 13th, 2020. And that's in March. And then it goes up, and you can see the first wave and then it goes down, and then it goes up. Uh, in February 3rd, we've got um, 1.74 uh, so million. So, wait, so this, this top thing then must it, be the world cases. And then it no, sort, that of, can't be right. sort of stays that. And then it goes down a That's little bit Florida. again. And then July 17th, yeah, there it goes. right about there, then the slope gets really bad. And folks, slope means rate. Yeah. Okay, so whenever you look at a slope, it's a rate. If the slope is going up, sharply that means upward. that it's increasing. If it's going up sharply, that means it's really increasing. If it's leveled off, if it's a horizontal line, that means no change in the rate. Right, right. If it's going down, that means that the rate is going down. Yeah. That it's sl that it's not slowed down. It's not stopped. That would be a horizontal line, right. but it's going in reverse. We now, of have, course, this reminds me of a mathematics joke I yeah. could apply to this, that if but, you saw this line going straight up or yes. nearly straight up, nearly straight you up. could kiss your asymptote <laughs> goodbye is what I would say. Oh, I just want to say, being there. that, excuse me, being that this is a, 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 a total, total cases chart, you'll never see it go down. You'll only see it go horizontal. Right, right. I'm, Excuse me, I was was, now, was, was you, speaking in in in, in other graphs. And chart. again, just because we're going to quickly look at this chart, if you scroll oh. down to the very next one, you talked about there's the first wave, re, re, second wave, re, remember third wave, the first wave, fourth wave, wave, way back in uh, April of 2020. That little tiny blip there, if you go down to daily uh, new cases in Florida, um, that little tiny blip on this line graph, that was our first wave. Then in the middle, July 17th, 2020. That's our second wave. Then if you go to January 5th, 2021, that's our third wave. If you go to uh, April. A, a, April 14th, 2021, that's our fourth wave. If you now look to uh, August 27th, you know, and they've, they've, you know, things are bouncing around, but August 27th is the height. This is higher than any of the waves yeah. previous. Yeah, it is. It's, Folks, uh... we're not learning anything. 
Well, we are learning some things. Well, but we, uh, we are learning that, that, that this <clears throat> is getting worse and worse, yeah. but we're not learning enough to keep it from getting worse and worse. We, 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 we learned enough after the first wave to know nothing. That's why we had a giant second wave. We then had a third wave. We then had a fourth wave, but the fourth wave was lower than the third wave. Well, but here's, here's and then the, it went way down. Well, here's the important thing too. And, and as you're then looking, we at, didn't learn anything. So you're looking at again. that chart too. At this point, this is where we started getting the vaccine. Yep. And look the vaccine, where it, look where it could have gone. Look yep. where it could have gone. It should have it should have gone down, and yet somehow spring break about <laughs> here's this Florida. about March twelfth <laughs> spring break yeah, two thousand twenty one. Uh, it started going up again. Yeah. So there were people that didn't get the vaccine. They decided, oh, it's over. I'm tired of all this. Yeah, yeah. and then it went back up to a high on, on April 13th. All right, uh, wow. And then it went way down again. I mean, it, it, it went way down uh, in June, and it's now... The, the, over, the overarching message that Robert and I, I always have here is please get your, get vaccine. your vaccine. Now, please. since I did say to you, Robert, that you'd be excited about the bonus chart, oh, I have I included chart. a bonus <laughs> chart because I, I'm saying you and I look at these charts, right? Yes. And people say, listen to us talk about the charts, and I'm saying, oh, this is easy. And they go, yeah, oh, easy for you to understand, you know, math boys and all that. So I found a chart that I thought if if one were to see this chart you would get it, you would get it. This is the cumulative rate okay. of US COVID-19 hospitalizations of adults by vaccination status from January through July. Okay, that's So it's cumulative, and what it has, it has, uh, if you're a West Virginia University fan or Michigan State, it's got sort of a blue and gold, it's got two different lines. Well, wasn't that nice? So one of the lines, Robert, it would be people who are vaccinated. Okay, and that's the that's the gold line, and, yeah, and it's, back in It's not January, going anywhere. Uh, sorry, it's, something's asking me for something. Uh, January, back in Janu January 30th. Right, they started on January 30th, which is sort of when you could, so people were now finally, you know, getting vaccinated. Right. Uh, you and, know, had fully vaccinated. You had right. to go through two and shots. So, and so, so this is rate per 100,000 population. On January 30th, for the fully vaccinated, it's 0.7 yeah. people for 100,000. For the unvaccinated, it's 15.2. So let's just do the math. 15.2. You can follow along with me here. Well, and it's, and divided by just, 0.7. Yeah, they're just that talking about... That means that, that they're that if you're unvaccinated, your rate of getting COVID-19 is 21.7 times if greater than if you're than you, if you had the shots and that's just a, and yeah. were fully vaccinated. And of course, now the th isn't that an interesting? The thing is, without getting too complicated, because I want to I want to make sure we get to cover okay. some other topics. Let's do it. Uh, when you look at this thing, you basically see that if you are fully vaccinated, it's pretty much a flat right. a flat chart. You know, in terms of being hosp you know, hospitalization. Right. Now, it doesn't do death. It's just hospitalizations. Right. But the other line is just, and, and, I, I don't and, know, it's not not a 45, and, 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 but and, and, a, and a slope. Say, yeah, uh, 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 this is a, the, uh, this is what they're calling a cumulative rate, which means right. that if if it slows down to zero, if the if the rate changes zero, it will be a, um, a, a, horror, a, a, yeah, just, um, a horizontal line right. again. Um, I'm going to the last number that they've got here, which is uh, for the unvaccinated July 24th. We've got um, 431.3 out of 100,000. Wow. Okay, well, let's, let's just think about what that means. Um, that means that 0.4% of the people that are not vaccinated have that. Been hospitalized. Have been hospitalized, yeah. hospitalized by COVID-19. 0.4%, 0.43, um, have been, been, been um, hospitalized between January 30th, 2021 and, and essentially today. Um, now let's do, let's just do a little math here. Uh, the, the, Fully unvaccinated July 24th is 431.3.
if I was fully vaccinated, and by the way, I am, um, on July 24th, um, there are 25.5 out of 100,000 have been um, hospitalized. So let's do that 25.5. And I get 16.9. That means that you're 16.9 times safer if you get the vaccine than if you don't get the vaccine as of right now for the cumulative. Yeah. So again, the bottom wow. line is get, get your vaccine. Wow. Then you don't get sick or your chances go down 16.9 times, folks. 16.9. Okay. Uh, and then you don't make your friends sick. You, 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 the, 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 the those people that are immune, uh, immune uh, 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 compromised there you're you're keeping them safe you're keeping the children safe you're keeping the elderly safe because as you get older these numbers go way up yeah um, yeah we've we've you know and we've and, said it before we'll say it again and, and and I keep hearing people go but it's my right yes but it's also part of your social and moral and American responsibility to keep your neighbors friends and family safe that's part of, don't wrap yourself in a flag and tell me no that's not my responsibility that's not it's yeah, that's it's, not it's, it's our about. it's everybody's it's responsibility. our responsibility all right so we're gonna we're gonna jump into these and i'm, I'm gonna say i'm just the, the ones that are also COVID issues let's just touch them briefly so okay. we can get to all these other cool things yep uh first of all there's been a lot of talk the reason why i actually posted this one robert is that i actually saw that ohio county where you oh, reside things are going bad here well and I, there was tired of sorting pills yes. Try no, yes, I'm I not. the The thing that uh, the thing that I that caused me to just put this up about the variants was that somebody somebody in Ohio they did they had the news story about how many were the you know the original the beta the alpha uh, and for so I you know I've been watching the different variants and it one of the one of the variants that showed up in Ohio County was the gamma and I, I'm going yep. I hadn't even heard Isn't that that, that one was there so. Uh, this is a thing I will, I'm actually not going to spend a lot of time on okay. it because the point is they've got the mu, the delta, the lambda, uh, and this is a really good breakdown of all the, the kind of, uh, the various, as they call them, uh, uh, variants of interest, mm -hmm. uh, if it has specific things that they're looking for. And of course, in a broad sense, the biggest thing they're concerned about is a variant that will eventually... Oh, good uh, article. Yeah, because it has the... Be Look, it talks about the alpha variant, the, alpha, the, the beta, beta, then the, the gamma. The gamma, the delta. And we're all the way and up to what lambda. Are, what other variants are being Oh, yes. Yeah, see, I wasn't familiar with uh, eta, iota, kappa, lambda, and most recently mu. And I know that lambda, Wow. I'm just, just because we're not going to talk about everything, but the lambda variant, uh, it's not listed, but it's listed by the World Health Organization. I think that they were saying that somewhere in, I know we did a report about the state of Washington that it was, they're really concerned because they think that it's possible that some of these will finally beat the virus. Well, wouldn't that be fabulous? No, that would not I mean, because, because, uh, because. I mean, I'm sorry, we'll beat the vaccine. I, oh, I, I oh, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 we don't want that. Um, you know, what, what's going to have to happen? Of course, uh, just like uh, every year, you need a different flu shot because the flu keeps keeps changing. Well, we're going to need the the, 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 the the same for the for, for the COVID nineteen. All right, let's jump back to this story about the. This is interesting about the enzyme. Okay. Uh, okay, so it says like venom coursing through the body. <laughs> researchers identify mechanism driving. COVID-19 mortality. Oh. Now, like when, when, venom cursing. So here's, this is the long story the short. Body. And what I'm going to ask people who, who will who will understand this concept if they spend a little time reading it, please read through this. But basically, it says an enzyme with an elusive role in severe infl inflammation may be the key mechanism 
that's causing the you know the real mortality and the real issues. Now that's be as that sounds like a terrible thing. It is. Yes. But having identified it, it means you that, could do something. Yeah, about it says it. it's a okay. target for therapeutic yep. uh, stuff. Anyway, long story short, wow. they've identified the uh, uh, phospholipase A2 group 2A, or, or as I told we, you, yeah, or as we say, <laughs> SPLA2 2A. I knew that that was everybody happen. knew that. <laughs> Uh, and I mean, the, literally, it says with the activated enzyme circulates at high levels, it has the capacity to shred membranes of vital organs. So this, Ooh. they're thinking that this particular uh, effect of a this COVID nineteen is the fact that it raises the levels of this particular enzyme to the point that it damages like the surface of your organs and your lung and all that wow. kind of stuff because it's it's uh, you know. So what, basically, they go down and give you the whole the you know, the reasoning, and it's the part that's so weird is that it's actually something that's found in uh, it's an enzyme that they, they call it a shredder because it's it's found in bacterial sepsis and it's also found in certain snake venoms. So Isn't that interesting. It is. It's utterly fascinating. That's incredible. So uh, protein shares a high sequence homology to the active enzyme in rattlesnake venom. <laughs> Wow. And like a venom coursing through the body, it has the capacity to bind to receptors at neuromuscular junctions and potentially disable the function of muscles. So, you know, the weaknesses and then the literal damage to all sorts of organ tissue. Okay. So, so they're, yeah, they're on to this. And this is another, again, another piece of really good refers news. refers to the enzyme as a shredder for its known prevalence in severe inflammation events. And then it talks about what those events are. That's just, that's just amazing. All right, let's jump back. Tardigrades, Robert's favorite pet. Hey, Libby, we're talking about tardigrades. Water bears forever. Water, water, water bears forever. I, I, I like that. The physics. Now, this is so cool because people have noticed that these things actually appear to walk. Yes. Oh, oh, they, they, they do not appear to walk. They do. Oh, walk. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. Um, oh, it's going to oh, be oh, an oh, argument here. Oh, 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 no. Libby and I have uh, have. <laughs> You've watched them. Have um, actually uh, sent off for some of these uh, for for one of our science camps. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Stuck under the microscope and 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 we did little movies of them and 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 the the uh, I I think this was a. Girls enjoying math and science camp. Well, and the thing that they we usually awesome. talk about with tardigrades, I'm looking at these little wacky looking little characters here. They are so and they're cool. small and soft, yep. and things that are this small and soft don't usually have something that would appear to be physical walking. Plump and ponderous. Oh, that sounds like that's like a, the, I think the host of Radio Science are News. Are you speaking of me? <laughs> Plump and ponderous. Plump well, and ponderous. you take your pick. Uh, you can either be ponderous. Plump or ponderous. No, either I'm one. Uh, and it says that, that they, they usually don't. They don't bother walking, you know, because as for for example, roundworms of similar size of, and body type thrash and slither their doughy forms over unpredictable substrates. Well, I wish I'd written that. That's poetry. Uh, so anyway, the reason good the reason why this article is so cool is that they've they've actually looked at these people looked at the the actual physics of how they walk, and the thing that they find fascinating is that the the kind of uh, mechanisms they see with these particular legs mm -hmm. resemble. It says one possible explanation is the tardigrades uh, long existed to fit neatly into no existing taxonomy may actually share common ancestors and even common neural circuit mm -hmm. with insects such as fruit, flies, ants, and other segment, segmented creatures, okay. which, as they say, scurry along in almost the same kind of motion. Another possibility is there's no ancestral connection between tardigrades and arthropods, but that unrelated groups of organisms, and this is what I think is probably more true, independently arrive at the same strategy because of, you know, an evolutionary advantage. So either one of those is kind of cool, and I think that's part of what they're trying to, uh, you know, they're going to suss out as they as they lumber forward. As they lumber on. With a so, weird little great... you know, when 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 I've watched these, they're, they're not swimming so much as they are climbing. Yeah, it almost looks like yeah. what they say, like an insect or something. Mm -hmm. But there's no question that whatever the mechanism, or whether there are current, like you know, uh, genetic links or something, it's going to do that because oh, yeah. over the I mean, these guys have been long for around for they have been so for a long. long time. All right, Robert, you're going to like this story because I've heard I you talk about the Mars trip. Lost pigs. And look at this cool thing about will it be safe for humans to fly to Mars? Finally, you've asked over and over. You've said, when are people going to start actually? determining whether or not the trip itself 
Mission would be viable if it doesn't exceed four years. International research <laughs> team concludes. <laughs> oh, when they say right, viable, does that mean that you'll get there with a, you'll be able to crawl out like a tardigrade or what? No, no. Um, see, has, has, has any human being ever been outside of the protective magnetic well, field of the earth for four years? In I'm a not confessing to no, that. No, zero people have done that. Have, have, have any human beings even cumulatively yeah. been in microgravity for four years? The answer again is zero. So we have no we have no clue. I mean we have 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 an idea, but we have no data, good data to say yes that you can exist for four years outside of one gravity. And yeah. yet these people are going, will it be safe for humans to fly to Mars? Mission would sure. be viable if it doesn't exceed four years. Folks, if if it exceeds more than a year and a half to two years it goes beyond what we understand. Well, does that ever four stop years, any of us? Yeah, really? Four years is beyond that, and 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 and, and this isn't a a linear thing. It's an uh, exponential. Yeah. Because you keep getting sicker and sicker and sicker. Your bones decalcify quicker and quicker and quicker. There are problems that multiply on top of themselves. If you're planning a four-year trip to Mars you're not getting anybody back alive. Wow. Now here, I'm going to just, because this is a long article. I'm just article, saying this right now. And I'm, I'm not going to, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to just give you two pieces of information. Okay. One, uh, this doesn't mention microgravity at all. So just so you would know. Are you serious? I, I didn't want to tell so you. So how you, are you supposed to get to Mars? Are you just supposed to, <laughs> supposed to transport there? Like, well, all right. I know. I, I didn't tell Thank you that. Thank you, Scotty, for beaming us to Mars. Okay, I didn't want to tell well, you that. that's just And then here's the, here's the other part that I thought you would fi find fascinating. One of the, the issues that they determined from the modeling is that if you actually built the spacecraft shell out of really thick material, to, uh, thick material. It would be even worse. It's worse because now the secondary, you know, right. the particles that exactly. get smacked off by the uh, other particles, so the when other you're, radiation. So, 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 so if you try to align your, your, your ship with lead, which is going to now have such a gigantic mass that 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 the expense is going to be in the trillions and of if you, dollars. And if you it. lick the inside of the spaceship, <laughs> oh, you get baby. lead poisoning. Lead poisoning. <laughs> um, yes, the the secondary radiation is going to fry you quicker than the primary. Yeah, radiation. because the the stuff whacking oh. into the. <laughs> so anyway. So good. They I thought she would. Uh, they, they they at least talked about that. Uh, did, did 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 these people talk about the radiation on the surface of Mars? Well, they they're just talking about the trip there. Oh, they're it's just like, talking about the once, trip. Once we once we get you there, it's your own problem. <laughs> and, you know, we're only guaranteeing you for the trip. <laughs> oh, you God. better get some travel insurance. That's, that's all that's that all I'm I saying. Thought. All right, now this is I, something that Robert and I have been following, <laughs> and I'm just hey, listen, I'm going to apologize to everybody up front who just doesn't. Uh, take the time to look into this and you, determine for themselves if they think that this is fringy scientist science but uh, basically Robert the date the date for the ecat demo has been moved you know and oh. it was going to be in November yep and then but but they've moved it Until coincidentally December 9th. They moved it coincidentally. So what else is happening on December 9th? Uh, well, one of the things that some people have said, do you realize is that they announced, they announced the Nobel Prizes on the 10th? But, that, <laughs> but people are just... But people are just oh, I think that's a coincidence. They are. But no, and Rossi, basically, he, he's not saying that. That's he's, funny. Uh, I mean, that was one of those interesting things. It's just that they... And it's going to be in Sweden, and I'm going to okay. say... So basically, the actual announcement is... So, 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 so the... Uh, so the the test is going to be in Sweden. Yeah, the, and it's going to be in a right. factory of the some people that are you know. Anyway, all I'm going to say is, folks, uh, you know, we sit here and we talk about. Oh my gosh, you look at uh, New Orleans and how nobody has electricity and yep. yada yada. I'm just saying that this is the the ECAT Rossi, the Rossi's ECAT energy catalyzer. In this in this case, the SK. L. They're going to present the L mm -hmm. SK LED and the SKL, which is the, produces electricity, a solid state electricity. And yep. I, there's a lot of stuff here that we're not going to go into now. Just be aware that Boy, if you were to have have a have have have, a, have some of these in tractor trailers and go to different parts of the state and just plug into the grid. Well, you wouldn't even need a tractor trailer because you could actually just put it on a small drone well, well, and drop well, it in. Well, yeah, but... but if you but, had, but, yeah. But, but what I'm saying... Plugged is, it into is, the grid. Is yeah. that if you had tractor trailers oh, yeah. of these, you would be able to supply the electricity 
to thousands of people well, for, for, example, for, 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 for one tractor trailer. For example, if you had it in downtown New Orleans. There's an idea. And I'm going to say more than just a thousand. But yep. uh, anyway, oh, yeah. so folks, please be watching this. Now, the only the other thing that I found, there's interesting stuff on this page, too, hey, that are that we need to look hey, at. Hey, be, 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 before, we, be, before we go on to this, why are we not hearing on the news You're that the uh, that the, 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 that those vehicles that you that you 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 go in that that you can suck the the moisture out out of the air oh, and yeah. get drinkable water? Why are they not? They're not, not they're, moving those those into various places with I, with solar power. I think that's part of the uh, the Institute of Ignored Science, I, the I, museum I, I, that if, we're going to put together. If if they were to call us up at Radio Science News. If the um, well, they uh, they if, took them into Haiti. Remember, they, under they the, certainly did. Was it under Clinton or someplace they actually deployed it was, them? Uh, it was years ago. Uh, I um, don't know. I, um, I, it was ten years ago. Yeah. So we're looking at the Obama era um, when 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 those people needed fresh water. They 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 did they, deploy they, a they bunch of these. Yeah. They flew these devices in. Um, they they set them up. I I, I think they were some kind of a. Uh, a diesel power or gasoline yeah, they power, had but, a, but but you could a have used for it, solar yeah. power uh, a generation too, <clears throat> and what it did was it it sucked in the the moist humid tropical air which you have in New Orleans, I've heard. and it would remove the water as drinkable water directly from out from the air from the atmosphere air, yeah. air out the other end, and they were uh, each of these machines made. You know, thousands of liters a day yeah. was 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 my impression, and you know, you just need four or five liters a day for a person. So we're looking at one of these things could easily, easily do 250, 300, 350 people for we're, we're for, have, for their drinking water needs at least. We're going without to have, having to ship in anything else, and then you could use your your uh, your, your 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 tractor trailers to bring in what what whatever. Food and 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 electrical other needs. essentials. Yeah. Um. I, I I just don't understand FEMA. Um. Uh, if you you need some some assistance with this, we're on call. Just give yeah, us I a don't. call. We'd love to. Assist I'm going you. camping. Don't call oh, me. Okay. Well, no, oh, I'm just serious. Okay, okay, I'm just kidding. Call, me. call the smart center right here. Yeah. I, well, the thing that, that I'd love to help out. The thing that you're basically looking at is why is it that when we've we've actually seen stuff that we know to have been and, sort of ground and it's tested years old <laughs> whatever I, I happens mean, they, this is not this is not you know some on 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 a blueprint somewhere and somebody's somebody's building the prototype no, yeah. in a, in, a, in it's a been garage. deployed it's been deployed the, these are fully deployable things okay now because i know when we get to the vortex beams people are going to probably say that's it i can't listen to these science fiction guys anymore but we're going to look at so, so zero, zero point, point. Okay. Now the reason why I put this up was because I, I noticed that, that it was on the same page as the uh, the, the Rossi story, oh, those creeps, and I thought you know. I thought now, now the reason why it, it links to <laughs> and why somebody would have put it on this page is that Rossi does claim that something about his device accesses and there's a big long thing on ResearchGate that people can go and read okay. for themselves, but there, the the point of it is that. Uh, that there are some some issues of zero point energy, which as soon as you say that, people go, yeah, "Oh man, yeah, I'm the, out of here." Uh, the the uh, the uh, most most scientists be be be, be begin their eye rolling. Well, at and that point. and so I was I, I looked over to the side here and I saw this. There's a video unlocking zero point energy. Okay. And this is uh, Professor Garrett Modell, and it came right up just like literally on Friday, right? So so, so, so is this the little video here? Yeah. Uh, well, okay. And the thing is, I it's a long video. Oh, okay. All right. But there's the solar hollow so, thing. So we're yeah, going to ask our... Yeah, our, here it is uh, down here. It says, uh, see this little video? Yeah. Now, if you click on it, it says you can watch it on YouTube. And if you start it, I'll tell you what, why don't it's you... It's a 44-minute, 47-second video. I'd like to tell you about a scientific journey yeah. that my lab and I have been on for the last couple of years in developing uh, energy harvesting technology. I'll tell you what, let me start it on mine and then I can, okay. I can right. control right. it here. Okay. Let's do that. Hello. I'd like to tell you about a scientific journey that my lab and I have been on for the last couple of years that looks pretty good. in mm -hmm. developing uh, energy harvesting technology that appears to be harvesting energy from the zero point energy vacuum. Appears to be. 
Um, okay. It's a story not just about the technical nature we'll of what we've done, very briefly, but, but the reaction of the scientific community and also the implications for this technology and uh, in general what we might do with it. But before I talk to you about that, uh, I need to mention the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics can be interpreted a number of different ways. And one of the ways is to say that you cannot harvest energy from a uniform background. If everything is at equilibrium, you can't get energy from one place okay. without no, no there, some, gradient, there yeah. being some sort of flow yeah. that would require there not to be an equilibrium. And if in fact we are harvesting energy from the background vacuum, then perhaps that would mean that we are violating the second law of right. thermodynamics. So in looking at this, I was discussing this with a respected scientist I know, and he talked about our techn technology and about what we're doing with me in the course of several emails back and back forth. And I shared some data with him and uh, he was very forthright and, and I appreciate his honesty in, in his responses. Um, at the end, he wrote me an email and that email said the following. He said, hi Garrett, look, most people are not going to believe your paper and that's with good reason. It's almost certainly wrong, like every other paper, that has claimed to get something from nothing. There have been many, many people saying the second law of thermodynamics is wrong. So far, they have all been wrong. Yours might, after all the failures, be the first success, but that's not how the smart money is going to bet. I'm not ignoring your data. I'm just balancing your data against all the data that says the second law of thermodynamics is inviolable. Isn't that great? Yeah. I, I really appreciate his honesty. Uh, so let's take a look at the technology and why it brings on such sort of skepticism. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm, so, going to, I'm actually going to stop or, right there. That sounds like a teaser, doesn't it? Yeah, that's, well, that, that is okay. a definitely a teaser. Now, this is a as, long article. But as, a, uh, as a physicist, I am, uh, let me just toss something out. Yes, if, if, uh, if the, 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 the vacuum point energy were were a very subtle, very insubstantial thing, but supposedly it's gigantic. When we talk about gigantic, we mean it's the gigantism of gigantic. It's supposed to be this unbelievable amount. So imagining that it would be smooth if there were a tiny ripple in a gigantic ocean, mm -hmm. okay, he would, he or, 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 or what looked like a tiny ripple in a gigantic ocean, it could be a huge wave. And so what I'm thinking is if we're tapping in to the teeny tiny changes in a gigantic amount of energy, those teeny tiny changes, if, if, if you were to say this is one bit, a, 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 bill, a, bill, a, bill, a billionth of 1% of that, That's still. What, <laughs> what if this thing is quadrillions of times a, a, a larger than, than, than what we're thinking? Right then you're going to get an enormous amount so that yes so that if it looks smooth nothing's smooth okay so there's there's there there's always little ripples in it so if you can tap into the ripple and if the ripples are are, are in ratio of the amount of uh, energy that's there we're going to be getting energy out that's that, yeah. that, that's what what well, I'm the saying. two things, and I'm so this is a really, it's a long, interesting video to, to, the two things I'm going to say is, first of all, this guy is the, the head of some department at the University of Bol Colorado right. Boulder. So this he, isn't uh, just, a kook. this is not a kook thing. No. The other thing is, he says, uh, he talks about a device that is harvesting energy. Now, mm -hmm. of course, he, they, as we said, apparently from the facts, he, he describes, apparently. he describes which, that, which it, that his device uh, generating power levels of 70 watts per square meter compared to, say, 200 watts per square meter by a solar cell. So yeah, this thing yeah. is like one-third. You know, this is his initial device. 
So, so the question will be, so, where does this go? And we'll just have to see. So, so this guy is tapping into something and is getting 70 watts per square meter? Yeah, basically uh, compared to, so let's say one third so, typical solar cell. So is this, so is this tw w w w 24 hours a day? Well, and he's getting 70 watts. That was going to be and, one of the things just, I was going to say. Yeah. Now, now do, do, do you need to put, you know, 79 watts into it? Or, or or is this or is this what's coming out of well, it? Well, it just sounds like you know that's what he says. It's that's produces. cool. Well, and again, I I put this up here because this is one of those things that uh, if if it has merit, will it'll certainly as any kind of scientific thing, especially in this age when we're trying to address you know all sorts of energy issues, uh, this whole concept. And, and I also put it up there because supposedly Rossi makes reference to some zero point energy issues uh casimir effects and all yeah. these other mm -hmm. things that that phys physicists will sit around like we say if they're down at the uh, the pub on friday yep. arguing about the casimir effect again oh there they are there they are duking it out all right now this next thing though i've this again is super fascinating to me because Vortex beams We've we've talked about things like how you know uh, hydrogen a atoms can have may be made to spin and do different things. This is something that this comes from Phys.org, I do believe the folks. Okay, no, so this, this is from is, Science News. Scientists previously made twisted beams of light and electrons. And I thought to myself, no, wait a minute. And what the, there's a sentence in here somewhere, whether we find it or not, because you know how we always talk about. You and I will be talking about this. Well, they always represent things that we know there are in our three-dimensional. Like they're yes. talking about it as a linear up right. and down or whatever it is. Uh, it's it's a scientist that knew how to. It says they already knew how to do this. Dish up spiraling beams of light or electrons, known as vortex beams. Uh, now the first vortex beams of atoms and molecules are on the menu. Now, see, I'm sorry because I, I missed a lot of this. To I begin did with. too. If you if you go down a little bit further, it says in quantum physics. Particles are described by a wave function. Sure. That's, it's the or is it a wave? Is it a, a wave-like pattern that allows scientists to calculate the probability of finding a particle in a particular place? But vortex hey, this beam is cool. this is like waves this. don't slosh up and down like ripples on water. Instead, the beams particles have wave functions that move in a corkscrew motion as a beam travels through space. Now again, that means the beam carries a rotational oomph known as Orbital angular momentum. This is something very, really very strange, very non-intuitive. And again, so again, oh, this art, this nifty. is a really cool article. The reason why I mention this is that, uh, again, I'm, I'm just going to say it, we're all going to wait. And there's a great illustration, but of how they were able to like determine some of this. Uh, but one of the things that uh, hmm. people have have uh, criticized uh, Andre Rossi when he's talked about how energy is being made with his ECAT yeah. is they're talking about, well, you know, uh, MC squared. He, he says, no, th that isn't violated because his point was that the motion of the things that he was talking about were not like, uh, you know, from point to point. They had to do with this angular momentum thing There's and an speed of light. There's momentum involved. Yeah, and so yeah. His, his point was that that the the mass that's being you know that's moving in in this particular ECAT system, it's not that it moves from point A to point B, left to right, up or down, right. or from you know front to back. It's that it's actually moving at the speed of light in these like you know these patterns of spin or rotation. Okay. So 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 so, so it would be like you say, okay, so I have this spinning object, and it's moving slowly across the room. How much energy is right. in it? And you ignore the fact that it <laughs> has right. rotational energy. Yeah, and okay. like, like for example, if it happened to be like a one kilogram thing spinning at uh, four hundred thousand RPMs per second, and it was just moving at like a mile per hour down the street, right. and you tried to pick it up, it would probably there would be some kind of a problem. It would rip yeah. your arm off yep. and throw yep. you across. And you'd go, the well, how 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 did that happen? Did that happen? It was just slowly, you know, right. strolling down the street. Okay. So this Very is cool. actually, okay. this whole thing about, now again, I was not really, now as a physicist, Robert, perhaps you had seen, I had not seen that the idea that uh, that they, they could use, uh, electro, uh, you know, photons or electrons, spiraling beams of light or electrons as vortex beams. Because, you know, you work in the defense industry a lot. And you Oh, sorry. <laughs> so I was not aware of that. But oh, man. The, but the idea that they're now talking about yeah. these vortex 
beams being atoms or molecules. Oh, atoms and molecules. Now, this now, is a now, real I'd interesting the, thing. I'd, I'd seen the vortex beams with, with ele, 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 electrons, right. but so, I have not seen the atoms of the molecules. So this yet. is this is a big uh, story. This is really If you're amazing. not a physicist, you're going, well, what other channels can I turn to? I don't know. All right, just a quick, this when I, I, when I saw Solar Holler, because it popped up solar on my holler. page about the vortex beams, <laughs> I just thought, <laughs> I'm putting this on today because Solar Holler is, these are these are people these are business people and scientists and innovators in our region solar hollow is bringing the next generation of oh, energy these guys yeah, we've, i know these guys. yeah we've talked yeah. to some of them yep uh, of energy production to our ancient mountains play. we relentlessly yep. pursue innovative approaches that bring solar within the reach of all appalachians and renew our communities and i just i put this link up uh, These are really good folks. Look, here's here's some people putting it. You know, it says at home. At it's home, on a house. Here's a barn in, and in the community. And and anyway, the other thing, there's some good little videos. The folks from Solar Hollow uh, talking it about jobs. It's it's uh, you know, and yeah. I love this thing where they have a Solar Hollow and the the the, uh, the Electrical Workers Union Local 317 launch ads calling on the congressional delegations to invest in clean energy jobs. How nice would it be to have clean energy job energy jobs in the state of West Virginia? Where, it would be you know, awesome. So, uh, and again, a nice picture of all these folks. Yep. Uh, Good stuff. I put this Thank up because you. I want people to, first of all, be aware, and maybe on this page you might you might want to get involved. Perhaps you want to do stuff on your barn. It, it, or, or it might be that, that, that you're going, hey, I'm, I, I'm looking for a new job. Oh, yeah, and... and uh, I just, I'm just saying, this is one of the wonderful things, even in an area that dom dominantly is of the opinion that, well, it's either coal, but then if it's not coal, it's going to be natural, natural gas. gas. Uh, there, are, there are more things. There, there are more things, more to look things at. in the universe. Okay, yes. so, uh, Robert, this is, this is cannibalism on a, on a scale that you on will not an believe. <laughs> Color scale. Yes. When I saw this story, because I'm thinking astronomers may have seen a star gulp down a black hole and explode. This sounds okay, like whoa, 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 this whoa. sounds like it, a cartoon I saw. Okay. All right. First of all, once it's in the black hole, it's uh, not going to explode. Ah, see, that's where you. That's see, where that's where they got me mistaken. That's guess where, what. So it so so it's it can the other way around. Okay. A right. black hole small enough. Oh oh oh, small enough. Yeah. Not, not, all right. That's so, what, that's so, what's so, so cool. So it's not that you've got a a a a a a, a, a galactic black hole that swallows a planet. You you've or, got a, a star. Right. You've no. got a small enough black hole that that a it star literally sucks. goes goes into the planet and then. Well, of course they attract the the, the planet implodes. Well, no, it's actually, it was actually a star. So oh, was, okay, so, all right. So which is I mean, even I mean I mean, I mean, I mean a star. Which me. is even better. Oh yeah. Because. Basically, you're thinking, oh, these two things were both, of course, as you know, gravity. You know, people often say, well, you know, the gravity attracted, and I'm going, no, the gra they always attract right. each other, one another, right. each other in this case. Everything in the universe. So this is so cool. Else. The the very large array. I love the name of that. All right. VLA. Yep. This is the uh, 27 enormous dishes in the New Mexican yeah. desert. This is so cool. I would love to go see that in person. Uh, it says, during the observatory scans in 2017, a burst of radio en energy as bright as the brightest exploding star supernova as seen from Earth appeared in a dwarf star, uh, forming uh, a, a dwarf star forming galaxy about 500 million light years away. Just down the block. So basically, and I, I just, I thought this is just one of the coolest right, so, things I've ever so seen. So we've got a black hole. Do, do, do we know how big the, the, the black hole was? Uh, and or do, it, do we have an idea of its mass? Well, I mean, I think there's still, they, they go through, because this next little piece was from the Keck Observatory. Uh, it says the Keck Observatory saw a luminous outflow of material spewing in all directions okay. at 3.2 million kilometers per hour from a central location. So they thought it was an energetic explosion. 3.2 million kilometers per hour? Then they found hour? an extremely bright X-ray source in an archival data from a monitor of all-sky X-ray, which is the Maxi Telescope in Japan. Anyway, the, the long story short is, and this is their best guess now, is that they they believe that the compact black hole the object spiraled into the still living star for hundreds of years eventually making its way to and then eating the star's core wow and then at that point the the larger star shed huge amounts of gas and sure. does forming a shell material around the dew anyway uh this is really an amazing well, scenario 
So yeah, if 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 it's consuming the core, uh, you're you're going to have jets of material uh, yeah. coming out the poles. Well, well, what what would be the the the, the rotational poles? Yeah. Uh, whether that lines up with the star poles or not. So so you're looking at um, luminous outflow of material spewing in all directions at 3.2 million kilometers per hour. That's uh, 890 kilometers per second. That's pretty fast. And this is, but they go through it as they say. This is really great detective work. But the basic, I'm thinking this would, boy, this would be a great scene in one of those Star Trek. I would Trek. love to see that. So okay. literally, right. you know, this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, All right. So we're not looking at a supermassive black hole just no. sucks and started goes. Bloop. Could be one of those we're, little black holes. We're 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 looking at a at a possible stellar size black hole, which is which is less than 10, 10 kilometers across, yeah. just goes in and causes havoc and wow. Yeah, and they're talking, and you know, they're talking about uh, oh, looking at uh, common envelope evolution, blah blah blah. And this is just a, a. They say most of the time, if you have uh, like two things circling each other, mm -hmm. like like uh, you know, dancers in the uh, in uh, West Side Story or something, you know. <laughs> da -da 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 uh, anyway, this is this is such a cool story. Uh, and that's that's their best evidence based on all these different. I, I love the fact that they Boy, garnered nice information from all image. these different sources. Yeah, the image that they have is pretty cool too. Okay, I would 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 I'm I'm, I'm sure somebody's gonna somebody's gonna do some some kind of computer yeah uh, 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 analysis of, of of this and do a movie. Um, I'd really like to see the movie. That would be really nifty. But so this is so cool. A star swallowing. A compact object such as a black hole or a neutron star, right. and but the the idea that uh, the black hole descends and then you know it gets to the core and wreaks further havoc. It's just such a great scene. And it makes sense that the that the the outer envelope of the star is far enough away that that it can with with all the energy of the core being consumed, then then it expands out. Yeah, and, uh, and 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 a nebula is probably. Forming. I'll tell you what I'm going to ask us to do, Robert. Okay. Because I'm looking at our time, and I think we, we might get all the stories in. But I thought this story about the shrimp, the shrimp, the shrimp, shrimp crown. crown. Now I know that you're you're the one of the people that will often apply your teeth to a shrimp as well. Yes, just I have been known to 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 gnaw on shrimp. Wow, check this out. Tougher and lighter dental implant crowns can be made of cellulose-based nanocomposites. And these nanocomposites come from well, and here's some where, here's insights the, from shrimp. Well, the source was, I'm, I'm scanning down, it says a research team succeeded in designing and producing a mineralized biocomposite exhibiting high strength stiffness and fracture toughness that resembles the architecture of the dactyl club of the mantis, mantis shrimp. shrimp. How about that name, the dactyl club? I, I like dactyl club. I used club. to hang out down there. I would get some iced tea and sit out on the, the dactyl they, you club. You know, Bring those people Bring never allowed me in. <laughs> yeah, they let you in. I would in. go in and go, hey, guys, what's the password for the day? And they go, next. <laughs> next. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, the, if you're familiar with the mantis shrimp, it's just I, I am familiar these with the mesmerizing shrimps are one of the deadliest killing machines. These are also one of the most amazingly beautiful animals on the planet. They are. They are gorgeous, and 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 these these things can see in uh, infrared and ultraviolet and 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 polarized light. And I mean, they're they astounding. Do. Well, the thing, the thing that we've, that's astounding is they've often talked about it when it's come to like sonofusion yeah. and all kinds of crazy things. Because they have this, 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 this claw, the claw or club like claw mm -hmm. that actually snaps that, so that, fast. That yes. Cavitation. Yeah. Occurs. It, it, it snaps so fast that it actually, that, that, that it actually produces light. Yeah, and and they're lot, I mean they're they're still investigating that in terms of uh, what they call sono fusion and all kinds of interesting things. Yeah, it's but like what is going on? I love on? it. Says the mantis shrimp's primary sources of food are hard shell marine organisms uh -huh. like Snaps mollusks. Them. Oh, so you're a mollusk, and here comes this you know little shrimp of a guy. It says to get to the soft, nutritious parts. In other words, the, yeah, yeah, the soft, uh, yeah, chewy uh, center, yeah, a yummy center. <laughs> they literally obliterate straight through the the like yeah. the the shell. And they do it because they create this uh, an amazing shockwave. Shockwave. Yeah. So anyway, uh, long so story cool. short, love, they've yeah. analyzed the structure. So first of all, why doesn't it destroy itself when it does this and blow apart? Right. Uh, it says it has it has multiple layers. Uh, uh, and what they've done is they've copied this. The main building block is a, a helicoidal. So it has a helicoidally ordered chitin. 
nanofibrils that are glued together by a protein-rich matrix. Again, I told you. Poetry. <laughs> this is poetry. I, I'm going to say that again. The main building block is a helicoidally ordered chitin nanofibrils that are glued together by a protein-rich matrix. Ooh, I am Man. all a tingle. I didn't even say hydroxyapatite down oh, here. Oh, now I'm tingling. Appetite crystals. <laughs> so anyway, this is what they've basically done is one of my favorite things, the bio mime or the idea I of going to nature. Stuff. Sure. This is amazing. And, and where they've started with, in order to do this, they, they've, they reconstructed a material based on this thing. And it says right. the new composite was processed into intricate shapes by manufacturing it into a dental implant crown with periodic patterns of micro-reinforcement orientation and a bilayer wow. architecture similar to human teeth. With further investigation, here's what's, the, the proteins could be engineered to produce new characteristics. But the point is, okay, they did it as a real object, which I, yeah. I, I tell these, when I think of the scientists, I'm going, what a wonderful smart thing. Mm -hmm. But once they, they apply this, this could be applied to all kinds of things because within the shrimp dactyl club, mm -hmm. it has super hard stuff super resilient stuff right. but then it has other stuff that stretches Soft and, and flexes and yep. twists and yep. it's the, uh, it, the brilliance it, it, of a composite this material is, this is amazing stuff and i on and, and and i love the fact that 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 some grad student or or maybe grad students uh, younger sister was sitting around going so if the mana shrimp can like break through Shell, why does the mana shrimp claw just explode? Yeah. And yeah. you're going, oh, well, there's, there's an interesting, question. challenging question for my, my graduate That's degree. Right. That's right. <laughs> I like it. I love it. All right. So that that is just so cool. Right, since we're right there, let's just take a quick look at the graphene. You know, because you know, and I, 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 I once said that if it's a graphene story, Robert has in his contract that it has to be included. Uh, yes. Half. Wait till I, uh, you see this. This is cool. Study unveils strain-induced quantum phase transitions in magic angle graphene. Now, Ooh. again, when you read through this, I'm thinking, is this an episode of the Big Bang Theory? So, they're just trying to, where they're so, just trying to sound cool. So when you, you, you stretch or twist this at a quote-unquote magic angle, yeah. then interesting quantum phase transitions happen. Yeah. Oh, that is really cool. Nice diagram by the way well and i think the thing that's cool is that they put more than one i'm going to say is speaking it? of more what this looks like this looks like a a, a elastic moray, moray interference yeah. pattern well it does i know it's i saw that too it, it, when you look at the I'm chart have to write that down i've never seen the phrase elastic Mor moray interference pattern you may be the first to utter this phrase i have to look right. further uh, it says, anyway, it talks about the, what they're calling the magic angle twisted. And here's the part that, that, I, that, that I hadn't seen before. It's not just the graphite. It's a bilayer. And so that's why you're getting, so the, the, the magic angle twisted bilayer wow. graphene, so bilayer, I mean two of them together. Mm -hmm. uh, it says it's a strongly correlated material was first experimented with in 2018. It hosts a diverse array of different phases that it can go to, including... Metals, semi-metals, churn insulators, quantum anomalous, this is, I love this, quantum anomalous Hall states, and perhaps most interestingly, superconductivity. Super conductivity. Says, as an analogy, one can think of this as, as like having eight buckets that can be filled with water. This guy explained, for a given amount of water, the MATBG picks out one and only one way to distribute the water. For instance, if there are two buckets worth of water, then the MAT BG might choose to fill two buckets full to the brim or fill four buckets each halfway. The f phase of the system is labeled by two things. One, how the water, electrons, is distributed in the bucket, Little the bands. bands. And two, how hard it is to add one more drop of water, i.e. whether the system is insulating or conducting. Oh, my God. Oh, what a neat analogy. Yeah, this is really, uh, this is cool stuff. Uh, looks like we're just we're getting excited. Okay. Anyway, please read the rest of this article. This but it, is this is slick. cool graphing stuff. Now the other one that just has we may never get to et, et as a no, but Robert, let's go to we, photonic. We, we will sometime. Uh, now since Robert uh, has for years and years, I think since early childhood, been a physicist, maybe two or three years old. I believe uh, two or three. Yeah. <laughs> this is this has to do with quantum computing, <laughs> but. Uh, this is when you think about the the quantum computing. In some ways, it seems so far off, and like so, how am I going to access this? But it says here at the very top, the quantum computing market is projected to reach sixty-five 
$1.5 billion by 2030. Wow. So investors. Anyway, this... You're an investor. This long story Quantum goes... Quantum computing. This goes into... This is about quantum optics and photonics. I'm trying to find a, uh, quantum modes, Q modes. Research is working on different approaches of, of trying to achieve quantum speeds. This is a whole different uh, entangling fields of light. Yeah, this is, we're going to wow, have to we're going to have to probably uh, delve into this because I was looking for a nice little. Uh, summation here some little sound bite it says his multiplexing systems opens and paths towards quantum computing computing in real world world conditions uh we will touch on this next week because i i was looking for a nice little summary of the photonics based concept but uh it's, it'll take longer to read it than it will for me to invite you back to radio science news next week it's 12 o'clock